Welcome to the Final Third Podcast. Today's show is going to be all about the European Leagues. With me today, I've got Steph and Yuan. Fran. Go! And the big shock that PSG have balls it up and lost a one-horse race. Yeah, big time, innit? Balls it up. Let's be one honest. Race. What yeah. All, all that all the money and in a, in, a, in a league where, well, last year it was classed as the Farmers League. They've not gone. They've not gone and won it. They've they've lost the Lille and Lille, are a team that have lost quite a few big stars this year. I'm just looking at the table now, boys, and it, it's unbelievable, really. Let's be honest. I mean, PSG have won well, 26 you... games. Lille have won 24. Lille have drawn 11 games. PSG have drawn four. But this is the big one. PSG have lost eight games, and Lille have only lost three. That is That's impressive. An incredible stat. Yeah, I'm just having a look um, as we're talking about this about where it went wrong for PSG in this season and what exact matches you can pinpoint that they maybe should have done better. Um, and obviously, apart from the Man City defeats, their last defeat in the league, in all fairness to them, was against Lille, and that was at the beginning of April. Uh, both, both teams are descending off there. So that was clearly the title decider, um, uh, which and it was decided in, both, in April. Neither team have lost since then. Yeah, they didn't really have a consistent time before Christmas, so hence why, realistically, Pochettino had to come in and there was a bit of a change around with management and a bit of switch around with tactics and everything else. They weren't playing as fluid as they did at the end of the season. Um, Mbappe has done well, as usual, finished top goal scorer in the league. But the rest of the team, I don't really feel like they've played very well. I think, the, I think Neymar hasn't really played as much as he really should do, considering the wages he's on. And the rest, the, you, look, you think the rest of the stars in that team... No one really stands out to be like getting all the assists or all the like our best. Yeah, so that's it's a bit of a shock. Ne- Neymar, by the looks of it, has lost a couple of matches. Um, it says here that he's he's only started fifteen games this season. He's he's only scored nine goals and five assists. Neymar, so yeah, it's unsurprising that possibly you could say that he's the impact. He's the uh, player that's been missing recently. Yeah, I mean. I'm looking at the league again. PSG have scored 86 goals this season. Yeah, their goal, their goal difference record was outstanding. Yeah, 86 think... goals, conceded 28, whereas Lille scored 64 and only conceded 23. There's not a massive difference in the conceding one, but the goals is huge. Yeah, and then if you have a look at the actual goals scored by and where it's come from, though, you could argue as well that, um, obviously, Mbappe scored 27 goals in the league, which is very, very impressive. Uh, Depay is second then with 20 league goals. So there's a big difference between him there and second place. Uh, but then their next, the highest goal scorer in the league is Moise Keane, surprisingly. Yeah, the reject from Everton. Yeah, yeah. I know. Assists-wise, and Angel Di Maria has got the most assists at nine, which isn't really... A PSG, okay. yeah. 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 Memphis, Depay, Memphis Depay in the league has done pretty well for Leon. But again, they've disappointed slightly. They've not really been in the title race majorly. Monaco... There or thereabouts for a little bit. Marseille have just kind of dropped off completely. We look yeah, Monaco, Monaco had an outside chance at the still at the end of the weekend, didn't they? Um, they they ended up draw. It, it, they were basically not going to win this weekend because of goal difference. But they they basically were on. Could have had they had won, and other teams may have dropped. Monaco did have an outside chance as well, so they've had an impressive season. I think it just shows that Lille's defence has been very good this season because Mike Magnin, the goalkeeper for Lille, has got 21 clean sheets. Rumours yeah, are impressive. It's in Milan now as well. Yeah. But, and also, Donald... the Lille Trump. manager, Christopher Gagne, or something like that his name is, he's on the way to Nice of all clubs. Yeah, what a surprise that is. You boys were telling me that he's just decided because he fancied a bit more of a challenge. I yeah. cannot believe that. Yeah, a bit of a shock in it. But you look at, but you look at the Lille's team, like hats off to them for winning. They've got like... They've got Yilmaz up front at a 35 year old, and they've got Jose Font at the back of 37 year old. Mm. Like, and also, then the player that we were talking about right at the beginning of the season, Jonathan David. Jonathan he's David. A lot about Jonathan David yeah. and how he's going to fit in. And, and he seems to have fitted in pretty well in that team. He, he's, he's, he's not stood out as in a, like a top, top player for him, but he's, he's been consistent. He's scored the goals. He's, he's been there been there or thereabouts. He's finished off with 13 in the, in the league in the end. Yilmaz, yeah. the. Like, Stale mate has got a few more, but to be fair, he's one for the future, and he's he's done well after his first season after a big move. Um, Very I impressive. Think, I think yeah. start, you've got to ask uh, what will happen to that team when that manager leaves. 
Well, you, you look at it in, the, in, in the past, Lille have been kind of raided for their best players. You look at Gabriel last year going to Arsenal. You look at, again, two, is it two years ago, two and a half years ago, Pepe left for 70 million to go to Arsenal again. Like, there's some big players leaving that team. And yet they still past. managed to do it. And in the past, they've had Hazard as well. Like, Ed and Hazard came from the Lille team. And again, they've been able to turn it around and do pretty well. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if there is anyone going to be a, have a big money move. Um, they've got a bit of a, an older team. Um, obviously, we said about Mike um, McGann, the goalkeeper. He looks like he's on the move to AC Milan because of Donnarona. Donnarona. Yeah, he's got, he had but, 35 and he's done a great job this season for them. But you've got a question, will he be able to maintain that next year then turning 36? Um, we've also then got uh, who's the centre back Font uh, Font who was an ex uh, Southampton guy. He's had a big contribution to their season, and he's 37, unbelievably. He's had a huge contribution. He's played pretty much all of their games, so surely they're going to need to find a direct replacement for him as well. It's not bad for him, is it? Leaving Southampton and then winning the league in France is pretty good. Yeah, there's a few. There's a few players you can look at. Incredible. I think. I think few money making ones because obviously France haven't really done very well like with COVID and stuff like that. They're losing quite a lot of money with their TV rights. So I think they will cash in over the over the summer. And hopefully some might come to the Prem so we can get to see them on regular. But hats off to Lille. I think they've done really well there. Um, moving on now to uh we are going to move on to Spain. Hola amigos. La Liga. So, to- yeah, and I, I was gonna try and make a seamless link there, sorry pal. Talking of players that have made a move to a winning team this season we'll go over to Spain and La Liga and we'll start off then you carry on sorry Bryn I'm taking over from your link but I just thought I've, I've got this seamless link planned how rude of me uh, let's talk about talk then about uh, Atlético Madrid and let's talk about Luis Suarez who has made that swap just like your uh, Josef Font in the French League unbelievable yeah. uh, why did they let him go I don't know um, and then let him go to a rival club a rival club that is then potentially on the up as well, and then that rival club has now beaten them to the title. It's a bit of karma in the in the long run. Of course it is. Yeah. So much to talk about in the Spanish league anyway. The fact that Madrid haven't had any of their Spanish players called up to their team that's another that's another topic in itself, isn't it? But it yeah. just shows uh, that the problems that have been in La Liga this season. I think having having a big change and and the change of guard really up in like Madrid like. Obviously, yes, okay, Atletico have won, but it's a case of like Real Madrid and Barcelona have always been there or thereabouts. But for them, not real Barcelona weren't in it going into the last game. Like they, they were out well and truly. I think no, 70, 79 points for Barcelona, uh, Atletico with 86 points. I think there's got to be a special mention for, for Sociedad and da, uh, David Silva going over there, making a bit of a difference, taking them from a mid-table team to, to like, as in Champions League contention. Um, they didn't make it this time, but maybe again next year. He might have one more season in him. He's made a massive difference leaving, leaving City to go there. So special mention to them. Don't, got Messi, you know, don't forget, though, Messi has still been making that impact, but the fact that they still haven't managed to build a successful team around him and he's now surely on his. Uh, he's he's surely peaked at thirty three by now. Anyway, you'd imagine. So he needs that support around him. He needs other players contributing. The fact that Messi scored thirty goals, and then Moreno second with twenty three, and Benzema scored with twenty three goals as well. You know, he's out. He's outclassed everybody else in the Liga by an absolute mile. But but there's no one else then in that Barcelona team that really stands out anymore. And that's the problem, isn't it? No, you look, you look at the players have signed in the past, like Griezmann and Coutinho and Dembele. They're, they're all big money signings, but none of them have really... They haven't done anything really, have they? Done anything. Like, you look at Coutinho, like, Liverpool are going to cash in on that one big time because they're, they're laughing because they've sold into a massive rival, as in a European rival. And last year, you saw him score goals against his, like, his team because he was on loan at another big giant. And... You've got to kind of laugh at it, really, because it's not making an impact. Barcelona, I feel, are very much in a reshape. There's like a period of time in their, in their, in their history where they're having to reshape. Same with Real Madrid, realistically. Is the going to stay there? Is Coleman going to stay there? Like, there's loads of rumours of managers that are going to take their place. There was rumours of uh, Xavi. Yeah. Xavi, yeah, the legend Roman. Xavi going back. And, and I think, is it Allegri, Allegri to possibly go to, to Madrid? To, uh, Madrid? Because then Zidane potentially could move over to back over to Juve so if Pirlo goes but 
it's it's a bit of a strange one, really. I think Spain's in a strange situation. Um, Atletico Madrid are taking full advantage. You you look at some of the players that they've got over there, like Trippier. He's gone over there, left <laughs> left Tottenham to go and win a league title. Done very well. Let's be honest. Yeah, take out his little gambling ban. But, but yeah, Other they've still got that. they've still got Joe. This Atletico have been really promising. They've been building a squad really well, actually. If you have a look at their squad, Joe Felix has made some contributions this season. He's played 31 games. He scored seven goals and five assists. So he's had some impact there. They've, again, it's that sort of opposite of what we're thinking Barcelona are doing there is that players can contribute from all around the park rather than just one or two players. And a special mention to Thomas Partey as well, who left was, Atletico Madrid to say, Arsenal yeah. and then Atletico Madrid have won the league. Bless him. We look, you look at like players like, and they also sold, they also they loaned Lucas Torreira from Arsenal to Atletico Madrid as part of that deal and he's gone on and won a league title <laughs> yeah of course yeah, yeah. Which, which is funny though isn't it like, but you look at some of their signings they make them they, they're, like Steph said like they're building a decent team there you've got players like Kondogbia um, and, and like Thomas Lamar, Thomas Lamar uh, Koke who's oh, like a, a very much a legend at the club and in the back you've got Trippier <laughs> Lottie Savage and, and then you can't can't knock Oblak like I think, re- I think realistically, probably the best keeper in the world. I don't know about you guys, but um, I've got to be honest here, and I'm I I haven't been interested at all one bit to, to keep up with the La Liga for the last couple of seasons now. I mean, it's a, I tough, about... it's a tough one to be honest. I think. I mean, Real, like yeah, okay, Real Madrid and Barca haven't been great the last few uh, months or whatever. But oh, I think I think it's quite hard for you to say that to be honest, Mister Kuru. I think it's a very well, I... exciting league. I mean, towards the you know, the last day, and it's possible of Real Madrid or Atletico Madrid winning the league. Don't get me wrong, but it just doesn't feel that there's nothing's changed. Um, I like the fact that in certain leagues, um, Italy definitely, there's there's changes of power, teams that normally end at top four and so on then change. And I'm just having a look at sort of the goal, goal scorers this season because I haven't been keeping up with La Liga too much, and I'll be honest. And I've still seen Messi up there, Benzema still up there. Luis Suarez, of course, is up there. Um, Moreno, obviously, a little bit, suppose a little bit different this season, but he's been around for years, Moreno. And nothing's really changed. I like the team, I like a, a league where you've got your youth players coming through. And, you know, you can that see that will next happen, gen- Mr. Kuru, because yeah. don't doubt Real Madrid and Barcelona's youth academy. There's some incredible no, yeah. players there. So I think he, there's a huge gap, there's a huge bridge, though, between those Real Madrid players away from their usual squad, strong team. And, you know, you can argue against me otherwise. OK, obviously, you've got Hazard and Benzema up front, obviously, both in their 30s. And I agree with you. You've got then lots of 20-year-olds. Um, and I do feel that they are lacking a sort of solid 25 range of players. They've got players in their 30s. They've got players in their early 20s. But I'm sure it's going to take them a few years to gap it feels like to me anyway. Can we can we just, can we just mention yeah. Marcus Lorente quick? He's had an incredible season as well. To be fair to him, done pretty well. Aren't you know, goals and assists, why twenty three contributions? He scored twelve goals, um, and he's had um, eleven assists. That's pretty impressive. And ex Real Madrid, he is. So they let him go. Thirty million. Go. And you think about it, like real, like that's right. I think Real Madrid looking at it on in. Look into the future. They need. They're going to need to kind of build up quickly. I think they've got, they've got an aging squad. The squad that's hit its peak and gone past it. Really, look at how well they did in the Champions League for the last five years. They've done really well, like three championships in the last five or six years. Sorry, um, and now I think they are getting to that point where like, you look at Modric, thirty-five, Kroos, thirty-two, thirty-three. You look at like your Benzema's and your Hazards. Then they're, they're not on the they're not on the right side of the twenty of the thirty, which like Steph said, they're their thing. But I do look. You look at Barcelona. They've got some outstanding youngsters coming through like Amsa Fati and players like that but I feel they are in a better chance maybe in in two years time or even a year's time to dominate Spain again I think Atletico Madrid are going to have their work cut out next year um, it's going to be an interesting one and like obviously you were saying change at the top we move now over to Italy where there's been a massive change at the top of the league where Juventus have held it for the last nine years and this year it's 
gone away from them and it's gone to Inter Milan. Antonio Conte has done wonders. Wherever he's gone, he has done Sorry. really well. So Chelsea, you look at Chelsea in the past, you look at UV, you look at now Inter Milan. And to be fair, look at that Inter Milan team. It is full of a very wide range of players. Like when they signed players like Ashley Young, Alexi Sanchez, Vidal, you were thinking, well, what is he building? An OAP team? Like he didn't, there was a bit of an Asian team and he's gone out and just absolutely bossed it. He's blitzed it. They, they've made good signings though, haven't they? I, I, I'd like to think they've made good signings. If you have a think of Hakimi that they made last summer, they've signed Barrelo, uh, Barela, sorry. You know, they, they, they've signed well. Lukaku. Obviously, Lukaku has been dominant. He's Don't get me wrong, enough. Lukaku has been dominant for them and having that target man for them, you know, having that poacher, having that guy there, the, the things that he was getting caught out on in, in the English Prem, that they aren't so much of a problem for him in this league. You know, don't get me wrong. He is a, a is a great player. And they, they can thank him for their success. But then you look at that, you know, top goals in the league, and it's Cristiano Ronaldo with twenty ninth. Of course, yeah. Just, wow. And then that says it all, really. Juve have just scraped into fourth place. They have got Champions League for next year, but is he going to stay there? No way. Like, if, has has he done all he can do at Juve? Like, he he left Real Madrid to go to Juventus to be that player to take them to the Champions League glory, and unfortunately, that hasn't happened. And to be honest, they're not even the top team in Italy anymore. So you look at now, like, is he going to move? What's he going to do? That Juve team is on on the backdrop. I think Pirlo in charge there. Like, I love the legend that's taking charge, but is he the right man for the job? But we spoke about this, Bryn, again at the start of the season. I don't think it was in an episode, but we spoke about Juve being in a, in a sort of transitional period. Um, they they made that signing of Kulusevski in the summer. They made the signing of Chiesa as well in the summer. They've obviously had Ramsey and Rabiot. They'd signed just a little bit before and McKenney just before as well. They signed McKenney last summer. So we spoke about that the fact that they are in a transitional period. Um, and I, I don't know if you thought agreed that sort of Perla was the guy to take them through. But they, again, I I really like the the Juve squad that they're trying to build. Um, around that potentially aging, an aging typically squad. The problem is you've got though is you've got the likes of Dybala possibly he might eye a move maybe don't know. You've got Adrian Rabiot who's probably going to go. Who's a decent little player to be fair. It's trying to keep hold and then I quite like this Demiral the Turkish boy. I really like him as well. I think he's a decent player. So I don't know Matis Dilit really want to. You know I'm not saying somebody's interested in him. But you've got to keep all of these players as well. Yeah, yeah right? and, and and again now, for me, comparing Serie A to the La Liga, I find this a much more exciting league in a way to try and keep up with, just because I feel that there's more depth in players and there's new players coming through and it seems like more of an exciting team. Um, obviously, then the other side of Milan, uh, AC, then came second, considerably behind the other teams there, of course. But the squad that they've been building over the last couple of years um, again, excites me in a way. They've managed to keep Ibrahimovic for another year. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then they've got some other exciting players. Am I, am I right? Mandzukic has been let go. I've read that After somewhere six this months, week. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. and a six-month contract. But you look at Rafael Leao. Like he looks a he looks a cracking oh, little player. Off. Matching him up with Zlatan, and a player like Zlatan, Zlatan's going to influence these boys really well. Give them a lot of kind of mentorship, I guess, is the very good way to describe it, and show them through life. Is, you look at the rest of them, like Brian, uh, Diaz, Tonali. If they get Tonali on, yeah, on a fun, I was about to start talking about Tonali. No, you know, boys, he's one of my favourites. Yeah, he's, he's a, a cracking crack little player. Like, and then Kese. I, I, and I believe Kese is probably one of the most underrated players in uh, European football, really. He's, he's, a, he's a really strong midfielder and absolutely shines in, in that AC Milan squad. But no one yeah. really makes much of a deal about him in, in like the like in England so that and uh, spe- can we give a special mention to Atalanta as well who's had a great season yeah. again again as well and, and they go under the radar don't they like, yeah they do last, that's the problem the last few years they've done really well and they've still lost players as well because a few that like Cassania leaving to go to Leicester last year they've lost a few of their big players and all of a sudden they're still there and Illich at 33 still banging them in still doing alright isn't he yeah he is yeah to be fair to him nothing wrong with any of 30s boys Lewis Muriel 22 and then, goals and then so as we're making our way further down there was big talk that um that Napoli were in danger of, of having to make some big uh outgoings then obviously you'd imagine that they might have had to have uh, sold um, Koulibaly then potentially had they not qualified but then um, they, they finished fifth in the end 
Uh, Lazio have got some big players. Then I, I'm a big fan of sort of Milinkovic, Savic, and so on. So they've got some really good players in their midfield. So luckily they've all avoided. What Roma finished seven, so they have to qualify. For the... But you look at next year, and you look at who's going to be in charge of Roma next year. Mm. Very exciting. Is You've it? got to think it is. It, I want, well exciting in the sense of your stir things up. Yeah, that I'd like. I don't think he's gonna. It's 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 exciting in the terms that he might. What he'd like to be third, fourth. So if Roma can get in the mix, I would say next season spend reasonably big in the summer to get to maybe finish fourth, set that as a target for them next year. That's then gonna mix things up even further because I would say that that's a strong top seven in Italy at the moment. Well, strongish. Can I talk uh, further down the league and make a prediction for you boys? Go on. Uh, can we talk about Torino and Andrea Bellotti? Yeah, just 19, the relegation. 19 uh, goal contributions this season. Is he, he going to go? I think he will make a move, yes. That's my prediction. In what kind of team? Like, you look You look at anyone in your, in your in the top European leagues, so they're going to be looking at him. Definitely. They'll definitely look at him. 13 goals in the league and six assists is not bad. You know not I mean? bad for team. Or just outside. I don't know. I fancy him and to go to. If I had to predict, I go Germany somewhere. I don't know. I fancy him to go to Germany. Maybe in Prem. Like, maybe in Prem. I don't know. Be a good replacement for Harry Kane. Well, yes. What What I've got to say though is a shame about Palmer going um, down, finishing bottom uh, this year. There is a little yeah, rumor, and, and it's sorry, Steph, just put in, but there's a little rumor that I what I hope is true that obviously Gianluca Buffon is leaving Juve at the end of the year. Obviously. Palmer going down. I'd love, love a little reminiscence and seeing Buffon back in that Palmer shirt to get them back onto the Syria at again. <laughs> oh, that would be. They've classic. made they've made too many departures though. Obviously, they lost Kulovsky in the summer. He was he was one of their biggest outgoings there. But they but looking at it, they did try and spend. The, or they got Graziano Pelle on a free. <laughs> Poor buggers, that old uh, <laughs> Southampton player. They got him on a free to try and get uh, in February time. But it, yeah. yeah, you are right. Look, you look at them. They were seven. They were seventeen points off off safety. I think they they came back up the leagues really quickly. Got back into Syria after their little financial kind of well difficulties, and they did well last year. They stayed up. They had a few decent players, but I think yeah, losing a few of their big stars in the summer and they've just suffered a little bit. No crowds and everything else. It's make, it makes a difference, and unfortunately, they've been they've suffered from it. Maybe the Buffon story is going to be wrong or right. Whatever happens, it'd be quite nice. It's quite it's a nice story. We can always it? dream. Yeah, we can always dream. Can and uh, finishing off in our Serie A, as I said, um, in eighth, then so just outside of our seven top strong teams uh, Sassuolo finished and uh, there's a lot of good mid-table teams um, I, I would say in Serie A and a couple of good players potentially that might be willing to step up might be able to make the step up uh, so I'm talking in particular about uh, two of their best players arguably this season I'm looking at uh, Berardi and then Locatelli more importantly for me Locatelli I want to talk to you boys about good little player to be fair to him good little player good little CDM there I, I'd like to think that he he, he could be having a move. He's he's somebody that I'd like to suggest could be worthy of and, and ready for a move uh, potentially in the next couple of years. He's got a lot of pro- promise and potential about him. Still only 23. Good little contribution to their season this year. Played a big part in it. And he can contribute some goals, some goals in the midfield, and he can get a couple of assists as well. I'd like to see more of him, to be honest. Yeah, I think I think you look at Sassuolo, they're a team that have been in that top bracket for a little bit of time. I think they're now at the edge, at the edge of it. They've just suffered out on goal difference to, to Roma on this occasion. But I think, yeah, you're right. There's players there that could be could be worth a go, could be worth a, a little shot at. Yeah, you know, they'd probably be reasonably cheap as well. I'd like to think no more than 20 million, really, considering that they're not even in Europe. You, you know, you've got a lot of bargaining power for some decent players, I would say, there. Yeah, not in Europe and with COVID. But then the only other side is that is there isn't, there's like, clubs haven't got much money to spend. But it's going to be an interesting yeah. summer. I think there's going to be a little bit of movement. I think there's going to be players that are going to move around, but we'll soon see. Going from Italy, we're going to we're moving over to Portugal. Go! Another big change at the top of the league was in Portugal, and that was that neither Porto nor Benfica were the winners of this league. And actually, it was Bruno Fernandes. His ex team Sporting Lisbon. I feel I feel there's a bit of a kind of like nod to this one because. They 
they took a bit of a gamble selling Bruno. And unfortunately, they, they okay, yeah, they got the money for him and everything else. But I think it was a bit of a bit of a gamble on their half. They wanted to keep him for as long as possible. They kind of had to say yes in the end because United came in with a lot of money and the fact that Bruno wanted to leave. And you now look and go, well, you looked 18 months later and they've won the league in Portugal and they've done well as well. And they're at his replacement, Boston. Yeah, Pedro, they've done Calves. well, but yeah, that's what I was going to talk about there. So obviously they've had pretty much a sort of re- a guy probably on ready to make that step and take that position because Bruno was contributing massively to sporting goals there. So he's just come in and put bang twenty three goals this season. So surely they can thank him for his contribution. It's a, it's a, new, a new signing, so to be fair, to have found him to have been that good and that and that and that kind of as an ideal replacement for them, I think is just whoever whoever their like head of scouting or director of football is. Yeah. So he used to be apparently he was a Wolves under twenty three guy. Al Malico, is that where they signed him from? Yeah. Supposedly, who actually had a decent season as well, considering they came up from the from the lower leagues a few se- only about two seasons ago. Like they they were top of the league at, at, at points this year and last year during the pandemic. And you look now, Benfica and Porto. Where do they go next? Because they've got some some big players playing for them on big wages. You look big at some of the signings Benfica signed in the summer. Obviously, yes, they lost Ruben Diaz, but they signed some big players on on massive wages. So it's kind of like where do they mm-hmm. go next? You were saying and before. That- Mac, left Mac Romaldo. Keep an eye on for him, guys. I think he's ready to make a big step up soon, surely. He's been yeah. around for years, Romaldo. Yeah, like Benfica have got some decent players. Like There's some fullbacks everywhere, really. I think Pizzo, you've got a t- to wrap, by the way, just a little nod, because <laughs> yeah. he's using the reserves, bless him, with that team, and he's done pretty well. But um, it's, it's definitely a league to keep. It's definitely, a, if you're a good scout, I would say it's a good league to find some good players at. Because uh, Braga, who finished fourth, it was only last season. Trincao moved to Barca, so it's clearly a, a season, It's clearly a league that lots of the teams are keeping an eye out for. Well, yeah, you've got you've got Ricardo Horta. He's a pretty decent. He's a handy player. You've got um, you've got well, you've got Andre Horta as well. So the, the brothers are pretty good, decent there. And then like you've got a, a, a pretty decent little squad in Braga, in Benfica, Porto and Sporting. And to be fair, if any big club of the top five, like you look at Italy, Germany, France, um, Spain and England, any of them come in for a, any of those boys, they're going to probably accept and move on. Yeah. Worthy notifications for you boys. Um, again, he's somebody that'll gone under the radar and I can't even tell you what team he actually plays for, but he's a player I've seen a lot on, um, on my old FIFA careers in the past. I'm looking at Ryan Gold, the old little Scott uh, sort of cam he used to be a couple of years ago. Did you ever come across him, boys? Yeah, for rent. And unfortunately, they got relegated. He got nine yeah, goals and seven however, assists. He got nine goals and seven assists. That's that's definitely a really good little contribution there to his team. Yeah, he didn't really... When, so a few years ago when he obviously left and left Dundee to move to Sporting, didn't really have the best of times. But he... he Signed for Ferenc two years ago, I think, uh, July 19. And yeah, that's right. since he's gone there, he's been a bit of a brand new player for like in his career. He's, you know, he's had a bit of a spark, changed himself up a little bit and done really well. And unfortunately, he has got relegated this year, but I do believe I can see him moving and going to a different club. Even that, that could even be the Prem or the Championship. Yeah. Am I right in saying Angel Gomez also signed for on loan? He went to Boa Vista. I, I, I'll double check that he's there now. But Angel Gomez, the old little tiny little man who centre midfielder, he yeah he he was a, he was their best for, for best player for Boa Vista this season supposedly. So he had a good little season. And uh, can I just point out if we're if we're speaking about uh, potential players ready for a big move? You usually back me up on this. You know uh, another player that I'm quite interested in. I want to talk to you about Jao Pereira, uh, Jao Polinia. Jao Polinia, yeah. You're a big fan of him, aren't you? Big fan of him, actually, yeah. At sport, again, at Sporting, and I know we've, we've just spoken about Sporting there. Age 25, for me, I've, I've been watching a couple of his scouted videos on YouTube recently, and I know it's obviously hard to tell about a player there, but I've been following him. He's been consistent pretty much most of the season. I would say he hasn't made much of his goal goal contribution, but he looks like a dominant, strong player there that can really cause uh, midfield problems. I'd love him. I'd love to see more of him. I Joplin, think yeah. if you look at the league as a whole, I think if you were um, at the European clubs, you'd look at Portugal and go, 
you know what, I think I could get a good technical player from Portugal. Yeah. Because there have yeah, been think... quite a lot. And for cheaper as well, because obviously you, link, you look at the links, they're, they're pretty similar technical-wise to Spanish players. Yeah. And their flair and their flair and everything else. And you look at how well their national team is at the moment. Yeah. You look at like Bruno Fernandes, João Felix, you look at uh, obviously Cristiano Ronaldo come to the end of his career. But you look at all that and you go, Even well... Even Nani did well. Nani in the past, yeah. But then you look and go, well, they've got the potential. They've got... The, like. So is can we, can we unearth another one of them? And I think that is the case of you take a gamble, you can do pretty well. Like there's a lot of kind of players there that... As you said, you can go on the cheap and do pretty well. So, uh, yeah, and I you look, Tony learned from um, Ruben Diaz, uh, sorry, Diaz, the centre midfielder at, at City, and Bruno Fernandes, the players who are, uh, perform in Portugal. They, that's the basically recipe for success now. They're clearly good enough and good, good, good enough experience to make that step up to the Prem. Yeah, it's definitely. worked for two or, two or three recent players in the last year and a half. It has, and you look at half the Wolves team and they're Portuguese as well. So, like, there is potential there of a, of a lot of kind of players that adapt well to the Premiership. And, like, they say it's quite a strong league and stuff like that. So, I think the Portuguese league is in a similar state. It's got to be you've got to be quite strong physical players to do quite well. Moving now on to Germany. Goal! There's not been a massive change at the top of the Bundesliga, and Bayern Munich have done it again this year and won it again but I think hats off has to go down to Lewandowski yeah. uh, he, he broke the record of the most goals in a Bundesliga season held by uh, Gerd Muller for a long period of time and to be fair I think you look at the football now is a lot harder than it was back in the 70s and he even with a goal right at the on the I think it was the 90th minute in the last game of the season and he, yeah. and he overtook he overtook good Muller. I think you've got to look at him as a potential Ballon d'Or again. 100%. 41 goals in the league. 7 but assists. Un- but unfortunately, he didn't win player of the season in the, in the Bundesliga. Um, Erling Haaland won that one. Yes. And I think you, you've got to see that the Bundesliga now, uh, there's a lot of stars coming through that league. You look at Sancho, Bellingham, uh, Julian Brandt. You look at... There's mm. a, Players like at Leverkusen or something out there, but for the, but away from the obvious talent. If you're having a look at the Frankfurt team, I'm just having a look how they've all That's got. That's what on I was going to say. You know, so behind uh, Lewandowski on 41, there's then Andre Silva on 28. He's second, so he's he's a goal more than Haaland. Portuguese, um, and, and then if you're looking at the assists, then you've got Kostic and Kamada, then both second and third in the assists table for that league. So. Frankfurt would be disappointed looking at the stats there. Joni finishing fifth. They finished a point behind Wolfsburg, which uh, uh, Wolfsburg have been up and down for me over the last couple of years. Obviously, last year, this time last year, we were keeping an, a solid eye on that Bundesliga. Um, Wolfsburg got a good team, really, but uh, Frankfurt would be disappointed about that finishing in fifth. And we've got to spin it upside down as well, boys. Like the team going down, Schalke, like on 16 points as well, the minus 61 goal difference. Okay, yeah, we. Like obviously, like you said last year when we were watching the Bundesliga because it was on quite a regular basis, we were looking at it going, "Well, they're not doing very well. Are they going to stay up? Are they going to kind of get any wins anytime soon?" They go into the new season and they haven't done well at all, and now relegated, second division. It's no surprise uh, based on the form that we were watching of them last season. Um, they've obviously had to change their manager halfway through because who was their previous manager again? Had the old Huddersfield guy, yeah, obviously. So the new coach took over in March this year, um, and maybe and obviously hasn't made that impact. However, you could argue that Schalke basically sold a lot of their players, and that's what they've done. Um, Schalke made a lot of loss losses. Didn't Liverpool get car back from there? I think you, Paul. Yeah, he's on loan. Um, so, yeah, they, surely they won't be able to keep on to him now. And also, they've lost, they got rid of McKenney as well last year. So it was, a, it was inevitable, really, that some of their strongest players will go in. Um, also, then staying down at the bottom, what a disappointment. Boys, you'll know that last season, Bremen turned into my favourite team. They just about stayed up last season because they held off in the, in the relegation playoffs. But this season, now they finished in 17. But a huge congratulations to Bielfield. Uh, and possibly Colin, I don't know the result of that yet. But uh, Bielfield, both teams that got promoted this year didn't go automatically down anyway. Yeah, so fair yeah. play to them. Yeah, I think I think Bundesliga is one of those ones that hasn't really changed much over time, and the top teams are the kind of ones that 
are there or thereabouts all the time. But I think you look at Dortmund, they're getting closer. I think it, it all depends on this summer who they can keep hold of. If they can keep hold of Haaland and Sancho, I think next year they'll be a lot, a lot, a lot more competitive. But I don't feel that is going to be possible. They're going to lose one of them. I think. I think Sancho is going to go. Haaland will stay in the year. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I mean, Sancho will probably end up at Manu. You look at it, yeah. They, they, they um, do look the play. He does look like the player's going to leave. Potentially. But they've still got, in, you know, brilliant players. Dortmund, to be fair. Yeah, incredible. Bellingham's had an incredible season. Bellingham has been brilliant, to be to be fair. Um, I'm not quite sure uh, what his stats are. I've got him. Mean, he scored. A, he scored one goal and had three assists. I mean, it doesn't sound great. But, but he's he's had a big contribution to the team though, hasn't yeah. he? I think. I think he's played he's played twenty nine games, which is very good. Yeah. Considering yeah. he's only and then seventeen. If you're, at, if you're looking at some of the other talent that's coming through, obviously you boys have mentioned Julian Brand already, Giovanni Reina then who has been on my radar as one of those US youngsters. Uh, yeah. but you know, they they've got so many good players. Uh, Guerrero, then the, the that full their full back, very, very impressive player. They've still got they've got Thomas Munier now. Uh, and that French centre back Zagadou as well. Zagadou. Do, do, do. Do. I think yeah, they've got a t- they've got a team building for the future. I think they they they've spent well. They've got a new manager coming in. They've got the Gladbach manager going over to that going over this year. I think that's going to make a bit of a massive difference. I think he he's the football he's played at Gladbach has been really impressive. We just don't have However, the players. Yeah, I was just going to talk to you about Gladbach anyway. So Gladbach disappointingly finished in eighth, considering I think they were in fourth or they finished much much higher last season. Can't quite remember exactly where they were. They did pretty well. They they they, they did alright in, in European leagues this year as well. Like, you Sorry, know, yeah, Europe, they finished Europe. fourth last season. Yeah, so they'll have had a disappointment there. But I do but, feel yeah. that manage, that manager move in might have had the effect on it, knowing that he's already going in the future. Because that's something that in Germany they do. They don't they? They'd say like, ah, oh, ne- and ne- next season the man this manager's going to go, but he stays in charge. Like, so you've got to lose um, a little. Bit. Talking of Gladbach then though. Is that team ready for pickings? Because there's still there's a there's a few players there that could make an impact in certain teams. Obviously, their striker Plia last year. He's now only twenty. He's, he's now yeah. twenty eight. Plia, he, he's still there. If I'm if I'm thinking now of players that can be picked off and signed possibly on the cheap again, uh, as as we sometimes think about, it. you've got Plia, you've got Breland Bolo, who, as you know, boys, I am a big admirer of him. Uh, Marcus Turan still there. Uh, Dennis Zachariah, who you know, you know, I was going to talk about yeah. him next. Um, there, there's there's a lot of good players there that could be picked off for a very very reasonable price. There is, there is. I think you look at that team that did that. There's a players that can move to anywhere, really, any big clubs, and yeah. they they're, they're, they're going to probably be picked off, like you said. Um, another club that has got some players that are going to be on the move looks like it's going to be Leipzig because their manager's moving. And the Gales man. And, and Umbacano both going over to Bayern Munich as their 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 period of change with the management as well. So is that going to work? Biggest ever um, money been spent on a manager in um, twenty million for a manager, which is huge. But in all all seriousness, you you look at the difference a manager can make. I think money like that can be uh, well not sniffed there. He's gonna he's a manager that's been well wanted and well liked by many of the. European super super teams can't say super league. Um, <laughs> Whoops, don't say that. League. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think there's going to be a bit of a difference there, but we'll see what happens, really. So um, yeah, it's was, it was a bit of a change, wasn't it, in Europe this year? It's quite nice to see. Watch watch out for us on Twitch. Uh, the final third is on uh, streams on Twitch pretty regularly. Uh, YouTube channel. There's lots of FM experiments going out at the moment, so keep an eye on them and. On Twitter, we are the final third two to uh, listen out for any tweets and any messages that we're going to be posted. So it's a it's a goodbye from me. It's a goodbye from me, and it's a goodbye from me. Thank you very much. Catch you soon.